Hey guys, it's your pal Argent here. So I'm sure people will say, Argent, that's not what social constructivism means. That's not what a social construct is. If you look at this definition, if you look at what this person said, etc., etc., I know. But oftentimes we can't really look at um, the official definition for things. Uh, because how something is practically used is often different from the official definition. I mean, if we look at a lot of um, uh, new atheist scientists, they will use the term nothing to mean something other than the dictionary definition of nothing. Actually, the dictionary definition of nothing will have nothing to do with their, um, their conception of what nothing means. And I guess I'm saying that uh, what a social construct is is kind of like that. Because uh, if, if you're facing kind of a, a smart postmodernist, they will say, well, it's the idea that, um, that all statements have a subjective aspect to them. Uh, that is, that um, how we view good or evil, um, how we view success and failure, how we view... Uh, some core aspects of science are determined by our, our culture and that it's not possible to fully separate the two. And to a certain extent, I, I think they're right. And um, I remember back in university, I actually found myself often agreeing with the critical theorists because uh, they took what I would probably call a less autistic view of um, human relations. Uh, if we look at kind of critical theory as it applies to uh, international relations, while it's inherently, while it's inherently Marxist in nature, uh, at the same time it, it, it actually acknowledges things like culture, nationality, uh, race, uh, religion, etc., as being things that fundamentally matter. Now, it believes that none of these things are real and that they're social constructs. Uh, but unlike uh, when you in, in international relations, uh, one of the conceptions is liberalism. Uh, or liberal international theory, which is the idea that the free market uh, and human rights are what all people naturally want. Um, the critical theorist at least will say that's not what all people want. Uh, societies construct what they want, um, and that these things matter more than purely rational concerns. And so I kind of agree with them in that aspect. Um, but generally speaking, though, that's not entirely what it means. Um, Post, uh, postmodernism in general and social constructivism in particular is, in my view, a form of anti-realism. Um, it states that there is no objective observable reality, uh, or even if there is one, we can't know anything about it. And there's a lot of different uh, ways they describe this. Um, as with most of these things, a lot of it's just sophistry, where they invent their own uh, terminologies, they invent their own... Um, complex way of saying things like I remember back when I was in university and I was reading had to read articles about this stuff uh, it would be like 20 pages to say something that could be said in a paragraph uh, just it, just excessive footnotes excessive references to other things um, using words in a non-standard way etc um, but like let's take some examples I had from university uh, one example was the idea that genocide being a bad thing as a social construct. Because I remember in one class I was criticizing Sudan for its genocide and they said that genocide is a valuable, uh, being pro-genocide is a valuable moral perspective uh, that we have to stop uh, judging and has to be taken into account uh, because all perspectives are equally valid uh, because they stem from a, a social construct. And I'll get into what a social construct is in a minute. I'm just giving you a couple uh, examples. The other one is the idea that aerodynamics does not is not based on objective reality. Um, it's not that certain types of planes fly better because of the laws of gravity, air, um, thermodynamics, etc. Certain planes um, are perceived to fly better uh, because we have to make everything shaped like penises. Um, so missiles are perceived as flying better. Uh, because they're more phallic, and submarines are, are shaped like phalluses, and airplanes are shaped like phalluses. Uh, I remember in a friend's film class, um, the teacher came up with this concept of invagination, um, that whenever someone is stabbed or shot, 
uh, what it is, it's an expression of toxic masculinity, and it's a desire to have sex with everything, because stabbing someone with a sword is a form of rape, uh, because it the, the person who's stabbing them subconsciously views it as a phallus uh, that is penetrating the other person and creating a vagina on them, uh, thereby making their opponent feminine as part of a presentation of patriarchy. Uh, it's not because a sword or a spear is just, like, the most efficient way to kill someone. It's not that guns are bound by the laws of thermodynamics and bullets just work better. It's that it's a, it's a social construct. So what is kind of the social construct of reality? Uh, the social construct of reality, as I said, is an anti-realist idea um, that there is no objective reality, there's only how we perceive the world. Um, and, and beyond that, um, it's the idea that, uh, worldviews are nothing more than, a, a difference of opinion formed by different cultures. Um, that is, we view murder as a bad thing, uh, because our culture views murder as a bad thing. Um, implicit in a lot of this is an element of, uh, cultural Marxism. Uh, cultural Marxism being the, imp uh, taking kind of Marxist principles of, uh, the dominant cl of class oppression and applying it to social uh, concerns. Primarily, that's where the idea of patriarchy comes from. Uh, the idea is that all humans need to dominate one another, and when a, a dominant class gets into power, or a dominant social group gets into power, um, they control reality. Uh, they can socially construct reality. Um, so, they will say, for instance, that the idea that uh, it takes a man and a woman... T the, the idea of biological gender, that is the idea that only women can get pregnant and only men can uh, lay their seed in a woman, is a, um, a, a social construction created by the patriarchy. That is, a man and woman have the equal ability to give birth. Um, th th there is no biological woman why a, a, someone who is born with a penis can't give birth. Um, it's just that the males who control society have created a reality that prevents them from giving birth. Uh, similarly, death is a social construct. Um, as one of my philosophy professors um, was making fun of, uh, there was, I forget his name, if it was Richard Rorty or some, some Harvard professor who said death is a social construct. So if, if you're like walking and a piano falls on you, you're not dead unless your mind socially constructs your own death. That is, your mind just imagines that you're dead and then you're dead. Um, so essentially reality is something that's projected onto your brain from whoever's in power. So the idea is if you can destroy the people who's in power and replace the patriarchy with a matriarchy, uh, then reality will, will fundamentally change and men will be able to give birth uh, and women will gain the same upper body strength of men. And we can see this um, fairly commonly. Um, the idea that women should serve in the army has no biological, uh, cultural, historical, or social basis. Uh, it's just based on social constructs. Um, it's based on the idea that we're no longer a patriarchal society, so the underlying reality of biology will change. It's kind of how Marxist economics work. It's um, complete state, uh, centrally planned economics will work uh, so long as communists are in power and they're projecting their reality onto the society. Uh, if they don't work, it's not because of any kind of objective rules of, of economics. Um, they don't work because the people who run society um, are not thoroughly Marxist enough. And this is where you get the idea wherever they say Marxist societies don't work, uh, they'll say that's because th they haven't been tried yet. Um, because the idea is that um, external capitalist imperialists have projected their reality onto the Marxist state and prevented it from uh, from functioning properly. And this is kind of where we get the idea that, um, like, because if you try to explain why, why homosexuality is, is, to use their term, problematic, um, you would say, well, naturally speaking, the basic premise of life is improvement and, and self-reproduction. I mean, I think that's pretty close to the most basic um, theory of what life is as you can get, as my uh, friend Iberian would say. 
if asked to describe his philosophy of life. Um, there are two biological genders, and both are necessary to create a new life and perpetuate and improve the species. Um, the, the issue with homosexuality is it's 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 contrary to this. Um, two homosexuals cannot have a child unless they do um, they they take from it, from the outside. Um, either two gay guys pay a woman to carry one of their children, or um, two lesbians get an outside sperm donor to get to impregnate them. So the idea is that um, if the social construction was different, two gay people could have children without external influence uh, because biological gender is a myth. Uh, women don't actually have breasts. They're imagined to have breasts by the patriarchy. Uh, race is like that too. Um, the fact that there are not blonde hair, blue eyed people born naturally in Nigeria, unless they're immigrants or, um, I don't know, foreign business people is because they, um, is because of the social construction that people from Africa have black skin. Uh, there is no biological basis of race. Uh, the fact that certain races are lactose intolerant, uh, that certain races, um, are shorter or taller, like the idea that um, Koreans are naturally shorter than the Dutch, doesn't exist. Uh, it's a reflection of a superiority complex the Dutch have, and the reason that Koreans are shorter is because uh, Western countries project a superiority complex, which indicates they're taller, onto Asian countries, which makes them appear shorter to us, uh, because there's no measurable reality. Um, and part of this, and kind of the sleight of hand they do, is they'll they'll go to language, and they will say, um, language uh, because we use the term meter to describe a fixed length of space, uh, it has an inherent cultural meaning. It is not generalizable, um, because we use that word. Because we use the word gravity, which has specific letters which have specific psychological connotations it makes any attempt to describe um uh d to describe what gravity is as an objective scientific force irrelevant uh, the idea is you can't describe gravity uh because you have to use language and language is inherently subjective well i guess the point of this video is so what like why why does it matter if language is subjective to me uh there has to be an objective reality um, otherwise, the plane wouldn't fucking fly. I mean, you're, regardless of your, your race, your culture, what's socially projected onto you, you could take someone who hasn't been exposed to anything from some randy island in the South Pacific and show them a flying plane and be like, wow, that, that thing's flying. I mean, it's, it's the, like the eye nerve of a human can observe that the thing is flying. You can use any number of different measurements from rate, from radar to I don't know trailing a tape measure from behind the plane, to flying it a level with a mountain whose height is easier to measure. I mean these things are not difficult. So what if the idea of a meter is is a social construction? They're like, well, a meter is an arbitrary length. Okay, but you can convert one arbitrary length into another in a reliable fashion. A meter is a set number of feet. I don't know what units of measurement they use in other societies. A cubit, I guess. You can convert a meter into a cubit. You can convert a meter into whatever they use in Japan or China. I'm sure they probably use the imperial system, but... Sorry, the metric system, but you, you get my point. Whatever they used to use. Uh, you, you can reliably convert these things in a way that both cultures recognize. They may go, well, I don't really know what a meter is, but you can just explain it to them in their own unit of measurement. They're like, oh, okay, I know how far that is. Like, I'm Canadian, so I use the metric system normally. So when someone's like, uh, something is X number of miles, I'm like, well, what's that in kilometers? And then someone explains it to me, and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense to me. I know how far you're talking about. So even though there, there are these cultural differences, uh, color is also like that. Unless someone's colorblind, um, which is provable as being kind of a mutation because the differences from the norm. Also, color is, an, is a scientifically verifiable thing based on light refraction. 
Uh, so you can determine what color is even if theoretically you can't see it. Like, I'm sure a colorblind person using proper scientific techniques could say, well, this 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 is objectively this because of the light refraction, and that, that's a measurable phenomenon. So even a colorblind person can measure color even if they can't conceptualize what it looks like. <clears throat> so you have that, and then people will go, well, well, um, well, then, okay, so maybe science exists, but interactions between humans are a... Um, are completely subjective and social constructs. To a certain extent, although to a certain extent we also see certain behaviors uh, and certain types of societies make people more or less happy, just in general. Uh, we also see that societies independently with no contact with one another tend to, to found fairly similar uh, basic structures. For instance, the nuclear family is more or less uh, universal. Um, the Aztecs had a fairly similar concept of marriage to the ancient Jews, who had a similar concept of marriage to the Japanese and Chinese. Uh, some of these societies may have practiced polygamy, but even the societies that practiced polygamy, very often there was a wife, and then there was the mistresses, and the wife's children inherited it. Uh, there's some countries that practiced full polygamy, but even then that was heterosexual marriage for the purpose of reproduction. Um, and the perpetuation of a society. And even then, a lot of the laws were fairly similar. Um, pretty much every civilization, and even many like savage societies, had restrictions on murder. Even if they allowed people to kill one another, there was almost always a context in which it was appropriate, like between two men who had agreed to a duel. Uh, and we see these things virtually um, universally. Uh, virtually every society is patriarchal. So every successful society, and say, well, success is a social construct. Pretty much any society that isn't instantly wrecked when it meets another society tends to be patriarchal. I think there's only one or two civilizations, one was like an Indus Valley one, and one was like some randy one in the Middle East, who were matriarchal, and they immediately got wrecked by the patriarchal Indo-Aryans. If we look at Aztec society, it was in some ways more patriarchal than uh, European society. Japanese society is ultra-patriarchal. Um, a lot of African societies are. Uh, not all of them, there's some that are matriarchal. Although they, they tend to be kind of crappy. Um, but this, this thing independently developed. I mean, from these different peoples who, even if they may have been like the Indo-Europeans who shared a common language family, they had very little contact with each other for hundreds of thousands of years. The New World natives had no contact with the outside world. They had no contact, at least for thousands or tens of thousands of years, with another continent, and yet they, they formed societies that were immediately recognizable. Um, the Aztecs had nobility, they had an emperor, they had gender roles, uh, they had laws that were readily recognizable to any European. They had a religion that was recognizable to every Euro any European. I mean, it may have been very different in a lot of ways, but a European could go there and say, well, this is the Aztec religion. I may think it's evil, but it's it's in terms of the category, no one can deny the worship, the sun worship of uh, Hichi Lepotli was, um, was a religion. No one can deny the Aztecs had a nobility. And the Japanese had a nobility, and the Europeans had a nobility that were not exactly the same, but were very similar in a lot of ways, that fulfilled a similar social role. And even if saying a knight and a samurai isn't exactly the same thing, it fulfills an extremely similar role of an, a warrior aristocracy um, within a society. And um, like the Chinese form of government is readily um, coherent to a European, even though those societies developed with very little, with almost no influence on each other. And India is also readily, um, India didn't have that much influence on Europe, and Europe didn't have that much influence on India until recently. And um, the Indian form of government and Indian kind of morals and, and even marriage, etc., is, is different and sometimes a bit weird, but it's, it's readily recognizable. Um, so what they'll try to do is they'll try to find some like random tribes in the Amazon who don't have any concept of marriage. Even then, though, um, most just random savage tribes have a pretty normal conception of marriage, even if they might have polygamy or something. And if we're going to say, well, these, these random tribes have this like 
like don't have writing or don't have gendered nouns or don't have a normal conception of stuff. I kind of say, so fucking what? They're random savages. I mean, they haven't invented writing. They don't even have any form of religion. Uh, they can barely maybe make clothes for themselves. So like, like, well, that's a that's a social construct. Um, it's it's a social construct to think that having less disease, uh, lower murder rates, more prosperity, um, living a longer, healthier life is a good thing. Right, but this was this was fairly common throughout the world. Uh, more food was pretty much always viewed as a good thing. There are some societies that um, may have taken the opposite view, like in some society, like in Japan, dishonor was considered worse than death. Uh, but but at the same time, that's to uphold the higher principle. And most societies throughout history have also had the idea that sometimes. Um, a higher purpose is more important than individual life. That's also something more or less universal. So what's kind of my point of this? My point is that even though, yes, there are a lot of, of cultural ways to do things, uh, view things, and everything is to a certain extent subjective because of the connotations within a language, but the fact that you can pretty easily convert things between cultures, even if they're not precisely the same, like, I can read a book, as I said, on Chinese history, and some of it will seem a bit foreign and strange, but otherwise, it's it's fairly coherent to me. Okay, there's an empire, there's bureaucrats, there's there's a, 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 tests, there's there's a religion. The religion is, is not very similar to European ones, necessarily, but it's, it's recognizable as a religion. And, um, yeah, it's, it's just like, so what? Okay, it's different. It's it's convertible though. Science obviously exists. These various societies all founded vaguely similar um, approaches to things based on human nature, um, based on biological, environmental, and sociological realities. So the whole idea that that social constructs basically matter is, in my view, just kind of a load of bullshit. So this is Argent. I hope you enjoyed the video. Signing out.